the idea of thinking back to little Lauren being able to listen to brand new plays as soon as they were uh, available and being produced in New York would have been a game changer for me. I would have been addicted <laughs> to listening to these great actors deliver these performances. So now to be able to do that, I think is, it's just, it's incredible. And I think it's a gift to like little me and all the, <laughs> the young writers and the young theater fans uh, out in the world. Audible Theatre started because our CEO, Don Katz, is a lover of theatre and he wanted to find a way to enter into the theatre space, create more opportunity for theatre artists, and get their work out to a larger audience. The mission is simply to make the work available to more people in more places. We provide everything from personalized development support to space at the theatre to research support. It's really project by project in terms of what we offer and what each project needs. The opportunity to write a play that will be available worldwide uh, via Audible and also a play that will have the life of a, a normal staged play is incredible. The idea is that they're writing for a listening experience specifically. I think they are really excited about that. I think that's a new medium for most of them and a new challenge that kind of delights them. So I found myself having to grow a lot as a writer, figuring out how to put um, all of that uh, complexity into uh, a space where you don't have the visual. Um, and it, I think, it really pushed me to, to come up with really interesting ways to bring in a different kind of theatricality to a play. I'm looking forward to getting into the audio recording because I think it'll be a chance for us to really just think about the text again without any of the staging or the props. I think we'll get to work on the play in a slightly different way. We really are tackling this idea that theater is one thing, that, that people who aren't theater goers see theater as sort of this elite, expensive art form that happens in big cities. But nobody thinks about that TV that way. TV is reality and sports and drama and documentary, and theater is also. You know, I grew up listening to the BBC, listening to Radio 4, and you would have a play. There was a play in the background or in the foreground or on at uh, some point every day. And this, I, I feel like this is, is making that space for that again. Not just in this country, of course, it's in the world. Audible is the world. I think this story matters now because it's really a story about resilience uh, and a story about women's resilience. And furthermore, a story about the collective resilience that we need each other. This play stops everything and arrests it at a moment in time when history was really unfolding. When somebody listens to an Audible Theatre recording, I hope that they are inspired and delighted and intrigued by what theatre is. And I also hope they just have a good time. It's really good storytelling. It's, it's a dream, a dream for any writer. I was going to say the car. The I was going to say the car. Good. The car's a great place to listen to things. You're zoning oh. out a little bit, and at the same time, you're tuning in. I think the ideal listening environment for the half life of Marie Curie would be outside, somewhere near or next to nature. I'm going to say dusk, just so you can get a little glimpse of those first stars, maybe at the end. Big sweater, tea, stars. That sounds, that sounds pretty delightful.